Hey! Over 40% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. And if you want Chompy to eat this month, I suggest you do so. For Chompy. Come on, man. Do you see yourself as a narcissist? No. Sociopathic? Yes. Narcissist? No. But I do think most streamers have narcissistic or sociopathic tendencies in order to be where they are. Um, you, you have to have some kind of god complex in order to think that you are so entertaining that everyone should be watching you compared to doing anything else in their day. Um, it's just the truth. So, yeah. I, I definitely think that a lot of streamers have those complexes, but I don't see myself as a narcissist. I just don't. What is your view on parasocial relationships? I mean, my view is that it exists. My view is that it's going to continue to exist, and people like it. Uh, is it unhealthy to a degree? I think it's not terrible sometimes, but sometimes it is. These questions are not really the best. My view is that they're kind of weird, but I understand why people think it. But I, I understand why it's kind of weird sometimes. Do you think Tommy in it and other hugely successful streamers in their mid to date teens? Oh, yeah. Listen, I don't think necessarily Tommy in it is going to have problems with having an ego. Or I don't think those kids are going to have problems with having an ego from that age. The problem is they're not... I am so much different than I was when I was 18. And I have matured as much as I don't want to admit it. You know, I have learned a lot. When you're that young and you're getting that big, it's scary, man. I would never want to be that young and that, and that big. Because it's a... It's... Where are you going to go from there? You know? And you're, you're peaking so young. It, it's such a scary thing. Um... That is what they should be fearful of, is the idea of that when they're so young, the, you know, you see it all the time with these young childhood stars that become sick fucks. Uh, it, it just happens. Because you, you get all this attention and crave when you're young, but when you hit your 20s, even 30s, what's the difference? What happens? How does Tommy Innit grow more than he is now? A 400,000 viewer streamer. You know? It's a scary thing. Uh, and I, I think these kids are too young to even understand what's happening. But... Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think ego is what they have to worry about. I think there's a lot of other psychological things, like craving attention and other stuff that they're going to have to worry about. Like, I couldn't imagine dealing with the hate and pressures and all that shit that Tommy in it has to deal with. He's fucking 17 years old, man. That's a lot for a kid. And he is a kid, you know? It's just, I, I couldn't imagine that. The dude's a junior in high school, and he has to deal with all this shit. How has going off SSRIs affected you mentally and physically? Well, being on SSRIs, I was very... Just, I was dead, man. I mean, inside, I was so tired all the time. I just wanted to sleep for 12 hours a day. And I had no motivation, but I, I felt numb. That's what SSRIs did to me. It just made me numb. I had no emotions. I didn't cry. I didn't care about anything. My grandma died. I didn't flinch. Uh, I was just a zombie. And I was just this person that could take any blow, but I just wouldn't blow back. I didn't care. Uh... And it also made me not want to work out. I wasn't motivated. And I wanted to just sit inside all day and sleep. As I started to get off of it, I started getting brain zaps. Because it, I, I started to get off of it too fast. But I stopped doing that as fast. And I started to uh, slowly get off of it. And it took a while. But I've definitely gotten way more emotions than I used to have. And I also have more energy. So it's I've kind of gone back to normal pretty much. But it's a very heavy drug. I mean, it's super, super heavy. Uh, I'm glad I'm off of it, but I'm also glad I went on it. I needed it. It was a time in my life where I was so miserably depressed and so riddled with anxiety. I needed SSRIs, and I took it, and I, I, I'm glad I did. What's something that someone said that has stuck with you forever? Nick Pollum. So, I was making YouTube videos for uh, on streamers. And I was making a bunch of YouTube videos on streamers, and it was called the Mizkif Documentaries. Uh, so I was making these videos about different types of streamers. I made one on Tyler1, Dr. Disrespect, Mitch Jones, and I was going... I So I made one on Mitch, and Mitch reacted to it, but he did a terrible job. And I was not using Mitch's reaction because it was so fucking bad. He literally the whole time was bitching and complaining that the shit isn't real and that this is a stupid video. Soda found it funny. Soda liked the video a lot. Soda's reaction was really good. So I wanted to use Soda's reaction for it. So I thought of it wasn't a big deal. So here's how these videos worked. I made the video, someone reacted, I put the react up, right? The reacts were an easy layup of a video. 
it got usually double the views, and it was a good shit. So, I added who is Mitch Jones, Soto reacted to it, and the video starts blowing up. Blowing up, right? And while the video is blowing up, it just stops. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? I refreshed, the video got taken down. And I'm like, what the hell happened? So I can't contact Soda Poppin, so I contact the next best, best thing, which is Nick. And Nick, I, uh, I'm like, hey, this video got taken down. It's Soda Poppin reacting. Can you please put it back up? And Nick was like, so hard on me. He's like, no. And we're not putting it back up. Soda doesn't like react videos of himself out there, and it's not your content. And I'm like, are you fucking serious? Why? And we got into a huge fight. Like, I, I said he's worthless. And he started shitting on me. He said, I'm worthless. We did not start off on a good foot, me and Nick. I, like, we were, he bashed me. He attacked me. And I attacked him. Because fuck that guy. I was pissed. Um, but you know what he told me at the end? He said this. He said, listen, you're never going to get anywhere if you continue to just use other people as your face. Use the face of Mizkiff, not these streamers. And when he said that, I'm like, damn. So what he is essentially saying is that I'm never going to get anywhere just using the platforms of other people to grow. I need to grow my own brand and be myself. And he was right. If I kept making YouTube videos on streamers, no one's really going to care about me. I had to go make my own thing. Um, and started. I started streaming. So, uh, yeah. Nick really fucking pissed me off. Like, he really, like, I, I couldn't believe the shit he was saying to me. It was ridiculous. Nick, when Nick doesn't like you, you know Nick does not like you. It's not a, it's not a very subtle thing when Nick Palm does not like you. He fucking will shit on you and make you feel like absolute garbage. Um, but yeah, he, he kind of made me do it. And I'm like, all right. And I started streaming, uh, trying to make my face out there. Would I be anywhere without those videos? Fuck no. It's how I got recognized, how people understood who I am. And it got me uh, some of my initial viewership. Like, I got 20, 30 viewers from those videos. But that, that helped, you know? It, that initial 30 vi views is what made me stand out and made me be able to grow. So, yeah, fuck Nick Palm. He kind of did shit on me. Favorite show when you grow it up? SpongeBob. SpongeBob. I watched so much SpongeBob, I've memorized most episodes from season one to three. I've memorized so many episodes of Spongebob, it literally changed, and that's what, honestly, if someone was going to ask me, Miz, how did you become who you are? I would say Spongebob. It literally made me into the person I am today. This dumb motherfucker learned from Spongebob, Fairy Odd Parents, and Jimmy Neutron. Now, what would I, sh my favorite show consistently, Spongebob sucks now. Spongebob sucks in season three. Avatar The Last Airbender is the best show, in my opinion, ever made. It just... It takes it away. No one can get close. Every episode made sense. Every episode was godlike. And the ending was fantastic. There was just nothing wrong with the show. It was overall just a masterpiece. And that's pretty much it. It was. It was a masterpiece. There was not one bad episode. There's not one bad part of it. It all makes sense. It all fills in with each other. Even the filler episodes are good. Like when they get the tea shop, I fucking love that episode. When when uh, Toph goes on her own, uh, I fucking love that shit. Like it was all godlike. And it all... Meshed in with each other in the end. It all made sense. And every season got better. Season one was good. Season two was great. Season three was insane. It, it just kept getting better and better. I got chills down my spine every episode. Do you feel like streamers and chatters that have been on the platform for longer are unaccepting of the new frogs? I mean, there's a feeling that they always have, which is like, this is my turf and you're fucking stepping on my baseball field, right? But the reality is this. Uh, I think a lot of people are accepting of, of these people. Um, and I think they just want them to learn their language, and if they're okay with that, then it's fine. Now, some people aren't accepting of that, uh, and it is what it is, but I would say most people are okay with, uh, new frogs, as I am. You know, it grows the website. It's great seeing new people learn stuff. I'm, I'm totally okay with it, and I think gatekeeping's weird and odd, and I don't like it. Um, so yeah. You are a person that doesn't publicly show emotions. Since this is an honest stream, when and why was the last time you cried? I cried last night. I cry all the time, and I very much show emotions. Um, I cried last night because my friend Mike called me, and my friend Mike was one of my best friends growing up. He was by far one of my best friends, and he is getting married in August. And he uh, called me because he feels like we don't talk anymore. 
So I met Mike in second grade, and we hung out every single day. We'd go home. We hung out every single day. He'd watch me play World of Warcraft for hours. Um, we hung out all the time. And he had a stepdad, and his stepdad and mom were in one house, and then his dad was in another house. So his dad was a slumlord. Now, if you don't know what that means, he was a man who was a hustler. He hustled his whole life. He didn't get any freebies. He, st- he was started off in the ghetto, and he lived in the ghetto. And he made millions. So he owned many buildings. He was a real estate guru. People in the area of Newark and Patterson knew who he was. He was very popular because he made millions of dollars being a slumlord. Um, and growing like that. Me and Mike got our inspiration from him. He was a god at what he did. He go down the street, the most personable man you can ever see. He wore his he was just such a, an emotional guy. Like he showed passion for people. And he was a great real estate agent. Fantastic. And he was always there. And ever since we were kids, we loved going to his house. One, it was nice as fuck. But two, he taught us things. Like, I've always been very entrepreneurial, you know? Um, And I don't think you guys really know how much I was. I, uh, so we would go to his house and we would ask him advice on how to do things at the age of like nine. And he started having us selling waters on street corners, water bottles for like a dollar um, to people in cars. And we made a shit ton of money doing it. We make hundreds of dollars a day selling water bottles as children on the streets. Because we just did. And we were able to buy things, and we had a ton of money, and we did whatever the fuck we want. And um, his dad taught us these things. His dad would bring us to real estate things, and he would try to teach us these stuff. He wanted us to become real estate agents, and we wanted it really bad. We wanted to be like him because we knew what kind of life it was. You know, he made a lot of money. He was his own boss. We thought it was the coolest thing ever. You know, I love my dad, but he always lived a nine to five. It was always an accounting job. It wasn't interesting. This guy did whatever the fuck he wanted. It was fucking sick. So Mike's dad was the fucking man. And we learned for years about what to do from him, right? And uh, we constantly were trying to do entrepreneurial stuff. Mike would try to start his own business. We did this thing called Vima Verve where we literally tried to do one of those multi-level marketing shits. And we actually made money. Out of anyone that we knew, we're the only ones that made money from it. Uh, it was a scam in the end, but we made money. Uh, we, we were killing it. And I started selling weed. I was very entrepreneurial. He would do something. We always wanted to go into real estate. We always wanted to do it. And Mike, Mike didn't have a good relationship with his mom and his stepdad. His stepdad kind of always hated him because he always thought of him as a, uh, a bitch. He always thought of him as... Uh, not his son beca- because uh, he, he, he Mike's stepdad was an accountant and he's this like very stern like tough guy like hey like you know you're gonna go to school you're gonna get straight A's you're gonna work your fucking ass off and Mike was way more like his dad who was this entrepreneurial dude very entrepreneurial uh, Mike always looked up to his dad it's the person he looked up to the most in his entire life um so Mike was kind of shunned away from his parent, his, his stepdad kind of like shunned him away from his family. Mike really relied on his dad for, as an entrepreneurial stuff and like to like learn everything in life. And, uh, you know, me and Mike went to college. Mike went to the, where do you go? National Guard, I think. He went to the National Guard. And I went to college, and we still talked, we still hung out and did stuff, but we didn't really hang out nearly as much because we were both trying to do our own thing. I was trying to go to Vanguard and work my way up. He was doing this, and he wanted to do real estate um, because that's what he's always wanted to do. He's a very personable guy, my friend Mike, very personable. He's just, literally people say he's a clone of his dad because he is. He's so personal. He's good with business. He's good with sales. Um, So we kind of drifted apart, which sucks. Um, not that it really mattered. We both always knew we were going to talk to each other and Mike was going to go to the army and he was going to come home and he was going to start doing real estate. But while Mike was away, his dad got really depressed and his dad took a noose, went to a hotel and killed himself. And 
This dude... <sighs> dude, he's like a dad to me. It was crazy. He was literally like my stepdad. Like, I, I always looked up to him. Always. My whole life. He taught me everything about business and entrepreneurial shit and how to grow as a person. He got depressed for like three months and he just killed himself. He grabbed the noose, he grabbed some pills, and he fucking killed himself. And uh, Mike was away. So Mike lost his guidance. His person that was going to teach him everything, he died. And Mike has, you know... He's a tough kid, so he kind of like got back on his feet. But um, he... He's been struggling, and he's getting married. He's been with this girl for like seven years now, so he's getting married to her, which is great. But he's never had the ability to do real estate. He can't because he doesn't know where to start, and he has too many loans that he has to pay off, and he has too many things he has to deal with, and he doesn't know where to start in real estate. So I told him, I said, Mike, I, I want to give you like $50,000, and I want you – to just wipe away your debt and I want you to go into real estate and I started crying because I can do it so he, he's not going to take it he's like I'm not going to take the $50,000 but I told him I said look just pay me back within 10 years I said it's a loan I'm not giving it to you so I'll give you 50000 but you pay me back in 10 years and I, because I, I want him to be happy. I, I want him to do real estate, uh, which is what he always wanted to do. So he's probably going to do it. And I, I want him to. And I don't know who he's going to find as his real estate guru because he was going to look towards his dad, you know, someone that was like a multi millionaire slumlord. Because Mike, Mike was going to just follow his dad's footsteps because his dad's footsteps were just fucking Gucci flip flops. You know, they were really nice. But um, yeah. I, I told Mike, I said, look, I, you're one of the only friends I want to help. Because I don't want to help everyone. I can't. Nor do I want to, honestly, because most people weren't there for me like him. He was there for me. He was a brother to me. And his dad was a fucking stepdad. He was, uh, he, he was there for every birthday. His dad was always there for all my birthdays. But yeah, he, he killed himself. So um, I'm giving him $50,000 so he can wipe away debt. And... It made me feel good because I'm like, yeah, I can do that. I said, he's like, can you do it? I'm like, I just, I just won't buy my fucking next box and you can have, you can do this. So that's the last time I cried. And the last time I cried before that was about two minutes ago. Are you scared of getting old? <sighs> yes, dude. Yes. Because the thing is with streaming, it's a time. There's, you know, I, I could say that I'll be a streamer at the age of 45, and yeah, maybe I will be, but the problem with that is this. The older I get, the less I have a connection to the viewers or an understanding, and they understand me. I'm not at that age yet where it's like, almost like it, the chat's going to feel weird watching me because there's I'm so old, you know? If I was 40 years old, you're going to feel that way. 30, you're not going to feel that way, chat. If I was 40 years old, it's too far away. If you're 20 years old, you're not going to want to watch a 40-year-old. You're just not going to want to do it. Um, so am I scared of getting old? Yes, to a sense, but it's because I feel so young. And I also feel like I haven't done enough in my life to really feel, you know, to get – I don't feel like I've done enough, you know? People can say, yeah, you've done more than many will in a lifetime, but I, I haven't really experienced a lot. You know, I've barely traveled. I've barely gone anywhere. I've really just sat on my computer and refreshed live stream fails. So um, I want to do more as much as people think I, I've done enough. Uh, yeah. How much drama between streamers is unseen by the public? A ton, man, of course. There's a shit ton. Um, it's you got to realize Twitch is a high school. It just is. Twitch is high school and... You know, everyone's a drama queen, so it's just how it is. You've got the jocks, you've got the, the L nerds, you've got the trumpet players like Ludwig. It's literally just a fucking high school, man. Um, and ha is there drama seen by the public? Yeah, of course. Uh, is some of it aired out? Yeah, but there's a lot of drama. There's a lot of problems behind the scene. i am be honest with you, I really don't have a problem with anybody. I, I really just don't care. Uh, I'm very whatever with life. 
and I don't really think it's worth not talking to people because I can use it for content. But are there any sponsors you regret taking? <sighs> I mean, this is going to sound more general, but I don't really regret many things. Why should I regret many things? You know, like what things in my life? Look where I am. How can I say, wow, I really regret that? You know, how can I be where I am in life, where I'm at? with all of you here and say I really regret doing X because it really wasn't anything that bad but if you want to ask the worst sponsor I ever had by far it's Displate Displate not only didn't pay they didn't pay a lot of their creators um, and they also uh, what else did they do they just suck. I mean, they fall to the ground every time. Chance put up like 10 of them behind him, and they all fell. I put up tons of them behind me, and they all fell. Um, they ruined your floor. They slam on the ground. They're just metal, and they s fucking slam on the... I I've, I've had so many displays just fall every time. The only ones that stayed up are smalls. If you get a medium or large, boom, it hits the ground every single time. Any Twitch content you think is unethical... I think gambling's okay as long as you're honest with your audience in it. Um, if you're honest with your audience with gambling, I think it's fine. Because um, how I perceive it is, like, as long as you're telling the truth that it's really your money, that it's really the money that you have, or maybe it's the money that your the, 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 the website has. Like, I told you guys when I did my gambling sponsor, that wasn't my money. I made money from that money. That wasn't my $5,000 or $10,000. That's why I risked it all. I didn't give a fuck. thought it was fun to do. Um, but if you're lying and saying that it's literally your money and it's not, that to me is unethical. That is just morally fucked up, and I think you're an asshole for doing it. Um, and Twitch content that I think is unethical, I mean, in general, I think content where you're lying to your audience for stuff is really shitty. Uh where you're taking advantage of them. For example, the big one is the coins. Like, if you're making a cryptocurrency and you're like, this one's going to the moon, everyone buys in, and then you just rip the rug off. I, I think, I cannot believe people do that. Like, it's, you're literally pretty much stealing people's money for no reason. It's, it's very unethical to me. I think it's just so wrong. And I know some of you guys are like, oh, train makes gambling. I don't, there's, train is nothing compared to people like that. Nothing. You are making a cryptocurrency on the on the the, the to, to try to make others in, invest to rip it off their their thing. Like it's so fucked up. I I don't get that. Was there anything or anyone holding you back your career that you've had to cut out of your life? I mean, I didn't cut them out of my life. Uh, I don't think anyone's really ever held me back. My my mom and my dad didn't. Ice didn't help hold me back ever. If you want my honest opinion. Probably the one person that's held me back I had to cut out of my life is for Connor. And I had to cut him out. I mean, there's, it's, it's, it's I had to do it. Um, I can't, it was just a, it sucked because I was friends with him. I did like him a lot and he was always at my house. I mean, it's not like he was just some random dude. He was always here. Um, so it did suck when he was gone and we do miss him, but he's got to go do shit. He's got to go learn uh, through therapy or whatever to, I don't know get better and I think he will but it's gonna take a long time who would you put as the Mount Rushmore of Twitch Lyric Soda Summit Shroud either Forge and Erectful I don't know which one what are your parents and family's thoughts in your life uh being on stream <sighs> some of them like it um they don't believe in it man and, and I understand why they grew up with the 9 to 5. They grew up thinking that they need to do their job, which is trying to make sure that I go to school, get good grades, and go to college, and then go get a good job and work my way up the ladder. You know? That's what they have perceived that. This is all new technology, new things for our parents, new things for their generation to understand. And it's very difficult for them to realize that because it's been so normalized that that's the reality for so many years. You know? It's been almost a century of that where we are supposed to go – do well in school, be smart, and then that's how we do things, and that's how you make your money. When nowadays, yeah, it's different. Um, my parents don't fully get it. My dad gets it more than my mom, but my mom still talks about me going to fucking Vanguard and making $40,000 a year because my mom doesn't see my, 
My mom still talks to me about the fact that my TD bank account doesn't have enough money in it. I haven't touched my TD bank account in four fucking years. And my mom's like, by the way, there's not enough money in the bank account. Yes, there is. I don't need to touch it. I haven't touched it. Who cares? But she's like, you gotta do it. She just doesn't understand it and she doesn't believe in it. And I think when I tell my mom how much I really have made, I think she doesn't believe a word I'm saying. I told her. She's like... How are you doing? I saw you have a game show. I'm like, yeah, mom, it's doing insane. It had 140,000 viewers the other day. Oh, well, uh, how's Maya's bird? Like, it's like the next subject. Like, she doesn't even fucking realize that that's, like, incredible. That that's, that's 140,000 people are watching me. She doesn't care. Uh, cause she doesn't get it. And that's okay. I understand why she doesn't get it. She, it's not her fault. She grew up in this world of accounting. She wanted me to be an accountant. And what she got is my brother's a painter, my sister's a whore bag, and I'm an ADHD autist on the internet. It's Her cards are not what she wanted to be dealt, okay? She didn't hit blackjack. She fucking busted. So, I'm sorry for my mom, but it's just the truth. Will there be a college reunion stream? No. But, so, I had this teacher in uh, middle school, or actually, no, in high school. Her name was, I'm not saying her name. And she was a bitch. A total fucking bitch. Now you see why I don't want to say her name? Total bitch. I hated her. She always liked the popular people and she didn't care about anyone else. And I was seen as like, meh. I wasn't popular. I hung out with some of them, but I wasn't really anything. And she hated my guts so much. So much. That she always picked on me. She always thought I was the most annoying student and she always called me out for stuff even though I wasn't doing anything compared to what the popular kids were doing in the class at the current time. This teacher... Um, always shit talked me to other students. Imagine doing that. She shit talked me to other students, to my own girlfriend at the time. She talked shit about me. Um, and uh, she was an absolute bitch. She was uh, a nosy piece of shit, and I hated her. I absolutely hated her. I thought she was a terrible person. So one day in class, we're watching Hamlet, and one of my one of the popular kids gets up and screams on the top of his lungs, "Shut up, bitch!" or something like that. It was something with the word "bitch" in it. And she turns around, looks at me, dead in the eyes, and says, Get out of my classroom. You're never allowed back. And I said, That was fucking him. How are you blaming me? She kicked me out of the class. I went to the principal. I'm begging him to understand that it wasn't me. I call in some people. They all side with him because they, he's the more popular kid. Um, and, and then I called in Brendan, and Brendan was like, I was asleep. So I'm like, all right, I got fucked. I literally got fucked over. And... The principal decided to put me in a 1v1 flex class, which for some of you is called special ed, English, with a teacher, one-on-one. -on -one. Do you understand what it's like to have a one-on-one -on -one class? It is the worst, most agonizing 40 minutes of your entire life. She would read me the book like this, and if I look away for one second, she tells me I have to come back. I look away for a second. Nope. She tells me I, I would take the test. I'd have to do right in front of her. She had to sit there and watch me do it in the library. I would be with her on one on one. And I hated that teacher for making me do that. She is a horrible teacher and she's a piece of shit. So I want to go to that, that school, my high school, and I'm going to uh I want to donate. Because I love the school so much. And I'm going to donate. And I want a plaque somewhere. Where it says my name. And I want it right in front of her office. Because she's right by the auditorium. And the auditorium shit. And I might be willing to redo that auditorium. If I could just have a nice little plaque. Fuck that bitch. So that's my plan next. Is to help my community. What if she's gone? I know where she is. No she's not. She's still there. Fuck that bitch. She be happy? You are out of your mind if you think this teacher's happy. She hates me, man. She wants me to suffer and be miserable. She was like, you are one of the worst students. You're horrible. You're annoying. I'm like, I get that. But, like, I didn't say that. What, like, whatever you think I said. I didn't call you a bitch. Um, but, yeah. She was such a petty fucking bitch. I still hate her to this day. And honestly, half the reason why I try to be successful in life is to go to her one day and just shit on her and tell her how successful I am. I cannot wait. Um, I just want to rub it in her face and let her know that she was wrong and she's a total bitch and I hate her. 
and that I'm literally 10 times better than she ever was. That's actually why I like to be successful, is to fucking do shit for her. Uh, Ugh, I hate her. A lot. But she made me. Because you know what? Her anger fueled my fire. And I hate her. But I was also hated by most teachers. Most teachers were like, you're the most annoying student I ever had. But I was funny, so they were kind of cool with it. Uh, but a lot of teachers really couldn't stand me and hated my guts. And I couldn't blame them. Uh, I was a very annoying student. Would you rather give up Dito or all of your boxes? Why Why put this in there, Wajito? Why? Why? It depends where Dito's going. Now, if Dito's going somewhere nice, uh, you know, and he's not going to be wrapped up in a, in a, a shop right bag soon, I would probably get rid of Dito if I had to save my boxes. Uh, if he was going somewhere nice. Like, what if Emeru was taking him, and she has, like, nine rabbits that she takes care of, cares of crazy, and he can have friends? Then that's a good spot for Dito. But if I was told that Dito's going to be upset and he's not going to be as happy, then I would get rid of the boxes. What's the happiest moment you've had while streaming? There's nothing that will ever compare to me getting to the top of Jump King 1, and I got $10,000 from Thank You 693. That was the happiest in streaming it ever was. When I hit that, there was a euphoric moment for days. When I got my Lugia, I was I was definitely one of the most happiest moments, and I was on top of the world, but it wasn't nearly as all. That is it. Oh, I should have said meeting Maya. All right, well I'm fucked. Uh, that was the correct answer. You idiot. Oh god, I fucked up. 